Donovan here from One Track Jazz. Today, let's talk about the life of an American jazz legend, Sonny Rollins. Walter Theodore Sonny Rollins was born in New York City to parents from the Virgin Islands. The youngest of three siblings, he grew up in central Harlem and on Sugar Hill. He started playing the alto saxophone at the age of seven, but switched to the tenor saxophone in his early teens, which became his primary instrument. After graduating from high school in 1948, Rollins began performing professionally. He made his first recordings in early 1949 as a sideman with the bebop singer Babs Gonzalez. Within the next few months, he began to make a name for himself, recording with and appearing under the leadership of pianist Bud Powell. In early 1950, Rollins was arrested for armed robbery and spent 10 months in Rikers Island Jail before being released on parole. In 1952, he was rearrested for violating the terms of his parole by using heroin. Between 1951 and 1953, he recorded with Miles Davis, the modern jazz quartet, Charlie Parker, and Thelonious Monk. In 1955, Rollins entered the Federal Medical Center in Lexington, Kentucky, the only assistance in the U.S. for drug addicts at that time. While there, he volunteered for then experimental methadone therapy and was able to break his heroin habit. Rollins initially feared sobriety would impair his musicianship, but then went on to greater success. His widely acclaimed album, Saxophone Colossus, was recorded on June 22, 1956. This was Rollins's sixth recording as a leader, and it included his best-known composition, St. Thomas, a Caribbean calypso based on a tune sung to him by his mother. Ever since recording St. Thomas, Rollins's use of calypso rhythms has been one of his signature contributions to jazz. He often performs traditional Caribbean tunes, and he has written many original Calypso-influenced compositions, such as Duke of Iron and the Everywhere Calypso. In 1957, he made his Carnegie Hall debut, recorded and released Sonny Rollins, Volume 2. By 1959, Rollins had become frustrated with what he perceived as his own musical limitations and took the first, and most famous, of his musical sabbaticals. While living on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, he ventured to the pedestrian walkway of the Williamsburg Bridge to practice. Almost every day from the summer of 1959 through the end of 1961, Rollins practiced on the bridge next to the subway tracks. Rollins admitted that he would often practice for 15 or 16 hours a day, no matter what season. During this period, Rollins became a dedicated practitioner of yoga. He named his 1962 comeback album The Bridge. This became one of Rollins' best-selling records. In 2015, it was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. Upon signing with Impulse Records, he released a soundtrack to the 1966 film Alfie. In 1969, Rollins took another two-year sabbatical from public performance. During this hiatus period, he visited Jamaica for the first time and spent several months studying yoga, meditation, and Eastern philosophies. During the 1970s and 1980s, he also became drawn to R&B, pop, and funk rhythms. In June of 1978, he joined many other major jazz artists in a performance for President Jimmy Carter on the South Lawn of the White House. It was also during this period that Rollins' passion for unaccompanied saxophone solos came to the forefront. In 1979, he played unaccompanied on The Tonight Show, and in 1985, he released the solo album recorded live at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Rollins won a 2001 Grammy Award for Best Jazz Instrumental Album. On September 11, 2001, the 71-year-old Rollins, who lived several blocks away, heard the World Trade Center collapse and was forced to evacuate his Greenwich Street apartment with only his saxophone in hand. Rollins has not performed in public since 2012 and retired in 2014 due to recurring respiratory issues. In the spring of 2017, Rollins donated his personal archive to the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture, one of the research centers of New York Public Library. Please leave a comment and let me know which jazz legends you want to know more about. Subscribe, like, and share for more content.